today I will be explaining what are the elements that always appear in every Poisson distribution problem. I will be explaining also how to solve this Poisson distribution problem and how to obtain the solution using tables. This is the classical way. The problem that I will be using to explain all of this will be this one. The mean number of errors made by a member of the world processing pool for a large company is thought to be three per every two periods, with the number of errors distributed according to a Poisson distribution. If 10 pages are examined, what is the probability that? We have three different questions. And these are the usual questions in a Poisson distribution problems. What is the probability that at most 10 errors will be observed? Well, we are assuming 10 pages. Second, or B, what is the probability that exactly 10 errors will be observed? And finally, what will be the probability that more than 10 errors will be observed? Even if nobody told me that this is a Poisson distribution problem, I will be recognizing that the Poisson distribution will be a good model to analyze this problem, to study this problem. Why? Because first, this is a discrete probability distribution because we are counting errors. Could be zero errors or one error or two errors or 20 errors, huh? but never 20.5 or 20.32. Definitely, this is a discrete distribution. And second, we know what is the average in one interval. The interval could be an interval of time, an interval of space, or an interval of area, or in this case will be the average in, for every two pages. Eh? This is space. Eh? So in this space of two pages, we are going to have an average three errors for these two pages. So this indicates that this must be a Poisson distribution problem. And we know the formula of a Poisson distribution problem. It doesn't matter which tool you are going to use to solve the problem. You need to know that the probability of obtaining X errors will be equal to e to the power negative mu, mu to the power X divided by X factorial. This formula in some textbook appears different. For example, in some textbook use lambda. Some other could use a different symbol, but it will be always E, and this E is the number 2.718281.83. This is a constant in mathematics. This is the base of the natural logarithm. Appears the average also. This average is new here, but be careful with this average because this average is the average of the variable in the interval that I call the interval of the question. We're always going to have two intervals in a Poisson distribution problem. In the information of the problem, when they tell you the average, they so it's thought to be three errors for every two pages. So the mean number of errors made by this member is three errors per every two pages. So this is an interval because there appears another interval in the problem. And if you continue reading when the question is asked, from here after this dot here, you can read the question. If 10 pages are examined, what is the probability that at most 10 errors will be observed? So here again appears a number of pages. And this is the question interval. So we have the information interval, two pages, so they tell you the average in one interval, or the mean number, in this case, the mean number of errors is for every two pages. When the question is start, they should tell you another interval. If 10 pages are examined, what is the probability that? There will be some problems when these two are the same. For example, they tell you, the average if three errors per two pages, and then if two pages are examined, so these two could be equal. But anyway, they need to tell you two intervals, one in the information of the problem and one in the question of the problems. 
I'm going to call lambda the average in the information interval. So I'm going to call lambda equal three. There are some textbook that put this la the, the lambda here, so it will be different. Eh? For me, lambda will be the average in the information interval. There are other authors that use lambda as the average in the question interval, because this mu will be the average in the question interval, or whatever symbol that is used in the formula, it will be the average in the question interval. Okay, so far we have lambda equal three, the average in the information interval. Then mu, the value that will be here, it will be computed. This will be the average in the question interval. So how many errors in this interval, the temperatures? It will be mu equal lambda t, but what is this t? This t will be the number of information intervals that appears in the question intervals. So t will be the question interval divided by the information interval. So it will be question interval is 10 pages and the information interval is two pages. So this t will be 10 pages divided by two pages, does t equal five. So now we can compute what is the average in the question interval. So the average will be lambda that is three times t that is five. So mu will be three times five, so equal 15, obviously. To be practiced, you don't need to do this. You notice that in these 10 pages, there are five interval of two pages. So you don't need to do that. So you notice immediately that t equal five without making this division. But in case you don't notice, you can make the division. Question interval divided by the information interval and give you the value of t. After you get the value of t, you just multiply lambda times t and you get the average in the question interval. So now we know mu equal 15. If you know this, you are ready to solve any Poisson distribution problem. Sometimes you are so lucky, there are some problems, the easy problems. This is two pages and this is also two pages. So there is no problem because T will be one. Okay, now that we have this, we can use whatever method to solve the problem. We are going to solve this three problem using tables. So solution with the Poisson distribution table. Usually a Poisson distribution table is something like this. So you have several values for mu in some table appears here lambda. In my table appears lambda t. But this is mu, yeah, because lambda t is mu or the average. Some other appears just lambda because they put here in the formula of the test book lambda instead of mu. Or whatever table you have, always gonna have the possible value for the mean. The mean equal one or two or three or four. In this case, I just give you a part of the table and this part of the table have the mean equal 11 or mean equal 12 or mean equal 13, etc. Because in my case, the mean is 15, I will be using this 15 here. And the question I will be solving is probability that at most 10 errors will be observed. At most 10 errors is the same of probability of X less or equal than 10. This is the symbol for accumulative probability, probability of X less or equal than 10. But in English, we sometimes we don't say less or equal. We can say at most 10. You need to be careful in the question of the problem, the author of the problem, can ask you in a different English. The wording could be different, but you need to recognize could be at most 10 or could be no more than 10 or less or equal than 10, or maybe another way. Yeah? But if you notice that this, this is the question, it will be very easy using the table because the table have the cumulative probability. They have the probability that X is less or equal than something. So because in this case it's 10, I'm going to be use, using this term. The solution will be the number that is in the same row and the same column, the, the same row of number 10, for or x equal 10, and the same column of the mean equal 15. So it will be this number here, 0 0.1185. So this is just the answer. So it will be very easy using the table. 
people long ago loved these tables. Now people prefer maybe using a calculator or maybe using a computer. But in case that you have a table, you can do this. Yeah? So this is the way that you solve a problem that say at most thing. So remember, at most could be in a different way. You can say this in a different English. Yeah? You can say no more than 10 or in another way. Okay, so what to do if we need to compute a problem like problem B? Problem B is exactly 10 errors. If they ask me exactly 10 errors, what they are telling me is the probability of X equal 10. And the probability of X equal 10, you need to recognize in the question that they tell you probability of 10 or probability of exactly 10 or probability of equal 10. So there will be several ways to say this. In this case, the number is not in the table, but you can get it from the table easily. Actually, what numbers are equal than 10? We will be including all the numbers that are lower or equal than 10. But if at these numbers that are lower or equal than 10, you subtract the number that are lower or equal than 9, then you are going to have only 10. So that's what you're going to do. The probability of X less or equal than 10 minus the probability of X less or equal than 9. So it means that you are subtracting from here, from all the numbers that are less or equal than 10, that are 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, etc., onto zero, you are subtracting all the numbers that are lower or equal than 9. So you're subtracting 9, 8, 7, etc. So the only that is remaining is 10. So you can do this because these two numbers are in the table. This number probably of X lower or equal than 10 is this number 0 0.1185. Okay? So we have the first answer, but we also know the other. The other will be this number here, 0 0.0699. So you are going to subtract minus 0 0.699. If you do that, you get the probability of x equal 10. So if I ask you probability of x equal 12, you get probability of x less or equal than 12 minus less or equal than 11. The probability of exactly will be always the cumulative probability of the number, the same number, minus the cumulative probability of the previous number. If this is 13, you use here 13 and this 12. If this is 8, you use here 8 and it's 7, etc. So it will be always the cumulative probability of the number you are interested in minus the cumulative probability of the previous number. So if you do that, you find that this makes the subtraction 0 0.0486. This is the probability of x equal 10. And finally, the other probability that you can find it is easy is more than, so the probability that more than 10 errors will be observed. So they're asking probability of X greater than 10. Probability of greater than 10 actually means that X could be 11 or 12 or 13 or 14. This is a never ending problem because it's 11 to 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, could be 100, could be 101. Yeah. So if you try to solve it using uh, this formula, for example, you're never going to find just to, to finish. You know? And if you want the sad answer. However, you can use the table again because to be greater than 10 means that it's not lower or equal than 10. So this is actually the complement of this. So any time that is more than 10 and you have a table, you are going to use the probability of a complement. Remember, it's one minus the probability of the complement of the complement so it will be one minus the probability of x lower or equal than 10. so if the question is what is the probability of x is more than nine so it will be one minus the probability of x lower or equal than nine and this is the one in the table always lower or equal than is a probability in the table this is the cumulative probability okay so the only that you need to do is one minus the 0 0.1185 and that gives you the answer of 0 0.8815. That is the answer of the question. 
and that solve all these three questions using a Poisson distribution table. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you.